John. We've been in the book of John since the uh, first week of December and uh, we pick up the second lesson actually of uh, concerning the birth and the meaning of uh, birth of Jesus and the meaning of Christmas. We're reading from John chapter 1 verses 29 to 34 this morning. Let's read responsively and I'm reading from the English Standard Version. I believe the uh, words are on the screen for us as well. John chapter 1 verse 29 to 37 is the word of God we're reading this morning. 29. The next day he saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. I myself did not know him, but for this purpose I came baptizing with water, that he might be revealed to Israel. I myself did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and have bore witness that this is the Son of God. Amen. This is the Word of God. As many uh, of you know, uh, Cornerstone is my first you know, church that uh, I exert leadership over the entire congregation. And uh, there was, because of that reason, there were many firsts uh, in my ministry, right? I had the first privilege of uh, dictating and uh, monopolizing all the sermons at my church. Are you jealous? <laughs> I get to pick who speaks and uh, when I will speak, and that's my right, uh, at my privilege as the senior pastor. Also, it was my first time officiating a congregational meeting. It was the first for me as I came to this church. It was the first time for me to set direction and vision for the entire church, regardless of all the generations and ages of our church. But there was something of another first thing that I had experienced that I never thought I'd experience uh, as I came here. Um, and uh, I thought I had to know everything that was going on in our church, especially the big events that are going on. The pastor should know, right? Should have knowledge of this. Well, there was uh, one Sunday after service, I was talking to some visitors, and a brother pulled me out. He said, uh, Pastor, come to the fellowship hall. And I uh, said, what's going on? And, you know, it was lunchtime, that busy time bustling and, you know, trying to serve and people are sitting, sitting down on their chairs and tables. And, and uh, right in the middle of the fellowship hall was this big birthday cake with all these candles lit. And, you know, those moments when you're, like, cringy. <laughs> One of those, that we're celebrating my birthday behind my back. I did not know that, uh, you know, they were celebrating uh, this for me. And... Uh, I thought I had to know everything in the church, but everybody else knew except for me. That was a first experience for me. And after that, uh, you know, every year they do, you guys do something special for me, and it's always awkward. I consider myself kind of sacrificing for the good <laughs> so that you can celebrate my birthday. Uh, but I, I don't feel comfortable about that at all. I believe all of us have experienced a surprise birthday party or a surprise event just for you or a surprise gift that you did not anticipate and it probably didn't feel too bad right uh, although you were surprised you know I don't think uh, surprise and secrets are always bad especially if it is uh, saved it was reserved for a special occasion if it is for a spe specific purpose Maybe it's like a, a Christmas gift hidden under the tree for you to unwrap at the appointed time. Secrets not are not all that bad. God who created us and loves us 
from before eternity probably, has kept a very important secret to all humanity since the Old Testament. He said, someday I will send you him. I will send you the Messiah. I will send you the Savior of the world who can save you from all your toils from sin, even death. You will have a shepherd. There was this promise, but it was a secret. It was a secret of heaven and of earth. Nobody knew, including the angels, not even uh, the uh, Holy Council of God in heaven knew who this was and when this person would come. It was a tight-lipped secret in heaven and on earth. But that secret was revealed on Christmas Day. And, and we have believed and we have received that gift of Jesus Christ, who is the Savior, who is the Lamb of God, takes away the sins of the world. He is the Lord resurrected and our God that we worship. And it is no secret to us, no longer. However, what a contrast it is to the world. They know Christmas as a time when this person called Jesus came 2,000 years ago. And he started this movement, this religion. But they are, in their minds, scratching their heads. Why are Christians celebrating every year the same thing over and over again? Why are they celebrating? What is the reason for joy? What is the secret that they know that we do not know? They're wondering, but they can never find out the mystery of Christmas. You know, last year, 2018, um, right before we went to Guatemala, I heard the, uh, the Fuego Mountain the volcano erupted. And overnight, it, uh, it uh, consumed so many people and, and villages. And I heard that uh, the news was out. You know, the, this, this volcanic eruption was not like sudden and abrupt. It was more like a flowing lava kind of eruption, right? And so people who had heard that this erupted and they were in danger, they fled. They were able to save their lives. But there were those who were asleep, sound asleep at night. They had no alarm. They were not told. They didn't hear the news. And this lava slowly flowed down to the village and it consumed them overnight. So many hundreds of people died as a result of this incident. incident. Maybe the coming of Jesus is a, a, a wonderful news to us, and we have joy in our hearts. But on the other hand, there is that urgency. The coming of Jesus is also a urgent news to the world. Because after the coming of Jesus, the first coming of Jesus, the end time has begun. The volcano has erupted. And slowly but surely, the end times are progressing. And when the second coming of Jesus happens, the whole world would be consumed in judgment. We have that urgency. We know that secret. God has revealed all of that to us through his word, through his son, Jesus Christ. I pray that we could use this opportunity of this season of Christmas to share that secret with those people to the world that still does not know the reason for the season, the reason of joy that we celebrate this Christmas season. The question I've selected for today's message is this. What are we going to do with Christmas? What are you going to do with this year's Christmas? Like God has given us this gift of Christmas, this joy. What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do with it? In fact, going to the, our scripture reading today, the first century Israelites did not know what to do with Christ, with Christmas. In fact, it had been 30 years since he came. He was born in Bethlehem, Judah, Bethlehem. He had grown up in the, the small village of Nazareth. But the fact of the matter is, it was still a secret. People, hardly anybody knew about this gift of God, that he was the Messiah, that he was the Son of God. Who would reveal this news exclusive that he is here, the one we've been waiting, the one that all humanity has been eagerly anticipating, that he is here. Who will be the bearer of this good news? Who will publish this exclusive breaking news? Well, from the Old Testament times, God has already, God had already selected a newspaper uh, company for this. And that uh, newspaper was called 
a voice in the wilderness. And the editor of uh, editor in chief was John the Baptist. So he was out in the field in the wilderness every day proclaiming the coming kingdom of God to prepare the way for the Messiah. But there was a problem because John, the editor in chief, did not know who he was. He did not have the knowledge of who and when this person would be identified. But he was a voice in the wilderness like the prophet Isaiah had prophesied. And John the Baptist was doing his job until one day he recognized him. And that's what we pick up in verse 29. The first thing it says, Behold, there he is. Behold, this is the Lamb of God that bears the sins of the entire world. This is the one that God has sent. From God, he's coming from God. And he is the Lamb of God. And John explains to us, he's kind enough to explain to us how he was able to discover, identify this person. John in verse 30 and 31, he admits that he did not know. He, did, he himself had not, did not have the knowledge who the Messiah was. And he goes into the background. He says, but you know what? God had told me that if you see somebody like this fitting this description, you will know that he is the Messiah. And uh, what was that? What the revelation of God? God had told him before that when you see a person who's on him, the Spirit of God descends, you will know that he is the one. And John is saying in verse 32, I saw the Spirit descend from heaven like a dove and remained on him. And I recognize this. I see him and behold, he is the one. He is the one that comes to save the world. You know, um, um, when we seek, when we look for something, we can find it. Just like Jesus says, whoever seeks will find it, right? Whoever seeks, they, in their eyes, they can see. A couple of years ago, around this season, I uh, got an email from this anonymous person from Korea saying that uh, they are coming into Palo Alto area and uh, they need a ride from the airport. You know, it's kind of rare these days because people have connections here. They do Uber and, you know, they do the taxis and they have somebody, but it's kind of rare that people contact the church for this kind of stuff. But uh, I and Pastor Sung, we went out to the airport and we knew nothing about them. We didn't know what they looked like. We just knew that they were four, a family of four and two, they had two young kids. And so we were at the, uh, the exit of where everybody's you know, checking their, uh, getting the luggage and coming out that exit uh, and uh, trying to receive them. But we had not known them. We had not seen them. We did not know. I was kind of afraid, a little bit uh, shaken because had, we had waited a long time and probably hundreds of people passed by. What if we miss them? We don't know their faces. We don't have their phone numbers. They don't have a phone at this time. And hundreds of people have passed by. How would we recognize them? But all of a sudden, our eyes, you know, it crossed with another family's eyes. And right at the moment, we knew each other. We recognized each other, even though we had never met. See, we were seeking. We were searching for one another. And those who are searching and seeking, they will find. And indeed, as if we had met before. It was such a natural you know, uh, encounter. We greeted one another and was able to lead them to our church van and uh, get them to their destination. When we are seeking and searching, we find what we're looking for. Maybe John the Baptist was like that while he was a voice in the wilderness. He was searching and seeking from day one when he was preaching in the wilderness. He knew that he would be the one to recognize the Messiah. He was seeking and searching and being on the lookout. Is this the one? Is this the one? Is this the one that God has shown me? And sure enough, when he saw the Spirit of God descend upon this man and the Spirit of God remained in him, he said, Behold, this is the Lamb of God. He was able to proclaim with certainty. He knew for sure. He had witnessed firsthand uh, what, uh, who this person was. What does it mean that the Spirit of God remained upon this man? 
it means that the, this word remain means that uh, this is Spirit of God coming and residing, a permanent resident with Jesus. It's not a tourist. It wasn't just a visitor. The Holy Spirit was a permanent resident with this person. And indeed, we know that Jesus is the second person of the Trinity. And uh, he is one with God the Father and God the Spirit. And when John the Baptist saw a person who the Holy Spirit was with him and remained in him, he knew that this was someone special. This was the one appointed by God. Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Jesus, in fact. And uh, John was able to recognize this person and he was able to behold, see this person. Brothers and sisters, we also need to see Jesus, who he is, or maybe who he was this year to us. You know, our goal this year, where our prayer, our focus has been this, to be led by the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit always leads us to a goal, for us to be more like Jesus Christ, for our, us to know Jesus Christ, to understand him better, to become more like Christ. That's what the Holy Spirit does. What, what, what aspect of Jesus have you seen, have you beheld this year? When we behold Jesus, when we are led by the Spirit and we behold Jesus, we have that eureka moment. Behold, there he is. I recognize him. When I look back at my life this year, um, I have to confess that to me, I have beheld Jesus as someone who makes ugly things beautiful. You know, uh, our life is not always beautiful, right? Ugly moments happen. When's the most uh, difficult or ugly situation for you? For me, it's when the future is uncertain. When something I've uh, known and trusted is gone, that hope is gone, and the uh, future is kind of questionable, don't know where to go, it's kind of ugly. There's turmoil, there's a lot of uh, um, you know, trouble in my heart. One of those moments this year was when um, our beloved uh, children's pastor, who has been with us a year and a half, uh, suddenly gave me this letter of resignation. She probably doesn't know I'm talking about her right now. <laughs> and uh, Pastor Young, you, many of you know, know her. And uh, she has been a wonderful youth pastor to us until she gave me this letter. And uh, I said, no, 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 this is not your time. <laughs> and in fact, uh, I, in, in front of her face, I tore apart. You know, I'm not going to receive this. And uh, she gave it to me again. Well, I was always praying. And the, I felt the Holy Spirit uh, directing my prayer. And I felt him wanting to let go of Pastor Kim. Instead of holding on to her, just like she wants to, let her go do ministry in Redwood City as a children's pastor to this, this uh, small Hispanic church. And uh, I changed my heart to send her away as um, a missionary, sort of missionary to this uh, Hispanic church. And so some of you remember in August that uh, we prayed for her and uh, we appointed her as a Cornerstone Sponsoring Missionary. And as a result, uh, some of you have been vis visiting her ministry last uh, couple of weeks, in fact, to share Christ's love, to share food, and to worship together. I believe a lot of children went to see the play, <laughs> the musical that we saw last week. And I thought, wow, Jesus makes his churches beautiful. What was uncertain in our hearts, Jesus has changed that to be a, a multiplying uh, opportunity to share God's love, not only here, but also outside our boundaries into Redwood City. Jesus, you make all things beautiful. That was the, uh, the, the Jesus I, that I was able to behold this year. And I was reminded of Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11, which you probably are familiar with as well. He has made everything beautiful in its time. I behold, I witness before you that Jesus is my Lord who makes our church beautiful. Brothers and sisters, do you see who Jesus is? Did you see who Jesus was to you this year? You know, in this business of the end of the year, many parties to go to, many gatherings and many family meetings, why don't we take this opportunity to, to kind of slow down a little bit and focus on one thing? 
Who was Jesus to me this year? Who was that Jesus that I've encountered, experienced this year, that I need to celebrate on this Christmas week? Some of you have experienced the love of Christ, that Jesus is the one who loves us so dearly. Some of us experienced that, uh, his, He being the healer of our weaknesses. Some of us have experienced Him as the provider in times of desperate need. Some of us have experienced that Jesus as the protector of our lives. And others have experienced him as the one who maybe sometimes disciplines us, gives us pain so we could grow. What Jesus have you seen this year? Who was Jesus to us this year? The first thing we can do with Christmas is we need to see who Jesus is for us. Going back to John, John the Baptist, he all of a sudden experienced and saw Jesus, saw Christmas, in, uh, to put it other way, uh, and he knew he who he was and what he was there to do. So, what was after? What happened after that? What did Jesus, uh, John the Baptist do as a result of this encounter? Well, he was to show who he was. Not only to, to know and see who he is, behold who Jesus was to him. He was to show this Jesus now. John's task was not finished by just recognizing Jesus. In fact, it was only the beginning, right? He was to proclaim, he was to announce to the entire world that this is the Lamb of God. And that is verse 34. The last verse that we read this morning. Going back to uh, verse 34, he says uh, here, And I have seen, after I have seen, and I have borne witness that this is the Son of God. He's saying, I witness, I testify, I pledge with an oath that this is the Son of God. That this is the one that God sent, and I recognize him, and now, hear ye, hear ye, I announce to you that this he is the Son of God of God. So it's like a bookend. So in the beginning of verse 29, he starts with, Behold, you know, the Lamb of God. And the end of 37, or 34 rather, he says, This is, I witness and testify that this is the Son of God. Whatever happens between, you know, it doesn't really matter. It is all to explain that one fact that this guy is the promised one. That this man is the Lamb of God. That this person is the Son of God that we've been waiting for so long. He is the secret of heaven revealed to us now. That was John the Baptist's message. John's function was to reveal this secret. And now the stage was set. Jesus was on the stage. And, and John was the highlighter. He was the one putting the spotlight on him. And now it was his turn, Jesus' turn, to proclaim the gospel message into the whole world. In fact, us Christians, all of us have, do you know that we have received the same mission as John the Baptist? To highlight, to show to the world the secret of the Messiah. To show to the world that he is the Lamb of God, he is the Son of God. They say, uh, they, they say that you automatically become a patriot when you are overseas, right? Because your face, your nationality, you become a representative of your country, and whether you like it or not, and you are sort of like an ambassador to those around you. We as people of the kingdom of God, although we set our feet on this earth, we live here, our hearts, our birth, our origin is in heaven. So we always are longing to be with the Father, to be one with Him. And our mission here as we live on this earth is to represent God's kingdom, whether we like it or not. And the Bible calls us, you are ambassadors for Christ. In fact, Paul says in chapter uh, 5, 20 of 2 Corinthians, he says, Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. I believe all of us, although you probably haven't meditated it or thought about it that much, all of us have experienced who Jesus was to me this year. A, uh, you'd learn something more about him, his character, his love, his forgiveness, his patience. You've learned something about him. But the contrast is there are people around us that don't even know who Jesus is, 
They might know that he come, came 2,000 years ago as this founder of Christianity, but they still, this joy, that we, the reason that we celebrate is still a mystery to them. Brothers and sisters, this Word of God is encouraging us all on this Christmas Sunday morning to be a witness of what you've experienced, who you've seen, the Lord Jesus that you've experienced this year. They still are in wonder. You know, the reason that we are always, every year, routinely celebrating his birth. What does it mean to be a witness, right? Is it hard to, does it mean that you have to be a pastor, that you have to have this Bible knowledge and be like, you know, this teacher to be able to share what, who God is and who Jesus is? Now, I've been watching the hearings for the impeachment trial and you know, we see professors, diplomats, you know, judges, and people from different areas of life. There are no, you know, um, uh, professionals in impeachment hearings and trials. They are just there to say what they've experienced from their perspective. That's what all witness does. And God has called us on this Christmas day, on this Christmas Sunday, to be a witness of what God has done, what Jesus has done for us. We will all have an opportunity this week, I believe, to gather around the table, around food, around family, or meetings, social meetings uh, with friends or family, whatever. And I pray that we will have that opportunity to be the witness, to show who Jesus is. To, you've, we've seen, we saw, we beheld His glory. We've seen Him, experienced Him. Now it's our turn to be a witness. I pray that God will give all of us the boldness to share and use this opportunity to say that the reason for joy of this season is because Jesus is the Lamb of God. Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is my Lord. What are we going to do with Christmas? It is a time to show who He is. Right? Regardless of what, whether we might be this week. Let us use this time to recollect who Jesus was in our lives. And ask God for that opportunity to show who Jesus is to those people who are still wondering. Why are those Christians always singing joy to the world the Lord has come? Why are those Christians giving gifts to each other? Why are those Christians meeting on Christmas Eve to celebrate the birth of Christ every year? There's no alcohol involved. There's no dancing involved. But there's still joy and worship involved. What is their secret? I pray that we would have that opportunity to show who Jesus, who your Jesus is to those people around us. One more thing. And I encourage us to... Invite your friends and families on Christmas Eve service on Tuesday evening. It is, again, an opportunity to show them who our Jesus is. And if God has put somebody in your heart and uh, they are wondering who Jesus is, still the mystery, the birthday gift is still unwrapped for them. This Jesus birthday gift is still a, a marvel and mystery for them. I want you to pray and invite them to our, our celebration. Just show them who our Jesus is is. Brothers and sisters, let us see who Jesus is and let us show who He is. Amen. Let's pray.